Um, all right, what I'm going to talk about tonight is kind of the basics um, of, of what you need to do for your birds, how to take care of them, um, what all, if they're sick, um, kind of some medications that'll help, um, and then breed selection, building a fence, building a coop, I can help with all that. So I will go ahead and get started. And if you guys got questions, don't hesitate to ask any question that you might have. Um, I'm happy to answer them. All right, um, when you start with uh, getting your birds, you wanna get the proper fence. And it's gonna depend on how big your birds are, if they can fly if, or if they can't. And also, um, the main thing when you think about for fencing is um, your birds are on the bottom of the food chain. So you want to fence the predators out, not necessarily you're building your fence to keep your birds in. There's all, ki all kinds of predators that you have to watch out for. Um, birds of prey, hawks, owls. Um, uh, then you've got mammals, coyotes, um, bobcats. And then raccoons, possums, skunks will be around here, but you really gotta worry about. Um, probably one of the worst predators for poultry is probably raccoons, uh, coyotes, um, owls and hawks. And also, if you've got neighbors who dogs wander a lot, um, they could be detrimental to your poultry flock. Um, dogs, unlike coyotes or bobcats, they don't necessarily just kill to eat, they'll kill to kill, and you can come outside to a, a flock who, who that's been demolished by a, a couple of neighbors' dogs. And that's, I've had that experience before, and it's definitely um, not fun. So um, when you build that fence, make sure, um, three to four foot tall uh, when they're out, out grazing if you can. And then if you build it around a coop, um, I like to, when I build stuff, um, have an area where they are completely safe. So you go on vacation somewhere, the birds can get out. You don't have to worry about someone letting them out and putting them back in at night. Um, and then the best type of fence to, to put around to keep all predators out is chicken wire. Um, uh, coons can, can climb, but they can't get through chicken wire. So that's one that I highly suggest for putting around coops um, is chicken wire. Um, for for the building, um, things you've really got to uh, think about when you make a building is cut the wind and cut the moisture. Um, so uh, birds can handle heat pretty good. Uh, just make sure they can get to some shade and let air go through so shade trees are fine. But when you're building the building, really focus on winter and keeping the cold air out and keeping the moisture out. Because if the birds get wet, that wind can really drop their temperature and they'll get sick pretty quick, especially depending on what breeds you've selected. Some of them can't handle winter near as good as other ones can. Um, proper roosting space, you want to make sure um, each for like large fowl, you are like the big chickens, give them about two foot between bird to bird approximately. Um, that way when they roost, they're not climbing on top of each other. Or then the dominant birds, if they're too close together, the dominant birds will kick the one, the smaller ones off the roost. Um, and that way you kind of stop fighting or uh, birds getting uh, torn up or defeathered, that type of stuff. Uh, proper space is pretty important. And then when you make buildings, you want to build uh, nesting boxes, uh, preferably off the ground if you can. Um, there's a lot of, you can go up Pinterest, there's a lot of good ideas of nesting boxes and all kinds of ways to do it. There's not no real specific or way it has to look. Just um, like a shoe box size or a little bit bigger is big enough. And just something those birds can uh, lay the eggs where they'll stay clean out of the dirt um is is what you really is what your main goal is there and if, like when you're gathering your eggs be sure if you've um met, you also like if you find a bird net a chicken nest that you haven't seen for a while um all those eggs in that nest i would not suggest eating those eggs just because you don't know how long they've been there if, or if they're half um incubated um, I would toss those out if you want, if you're gathering eggs for eating, because you don't want any nasty surprises of eggs that have been there for a while. Um, in a predator safe barn, um, just make sure um, when uh, the predators that can climb, like the coons, 
uh, make sure when they climb up, there's no spaces they could squeeze into there. Um, a coon could probably get through a hole that's four, five, like five inches by five inches. Um, you'd be pretty surprised what a coon get, can get into. So, and then put locks on your doors because um, uh, predators, if you don't have a guard dog around, they'll work on doors if see they can get them open. And here's a good example of a basic coop like I was talking about um, that's connected or a, a pen that's connected to the coop. So if you're gone for a while, the birds can still get out and they're still safe. Um, that way you don't have to have someone come in on, at your place and let them out and put them back in. Uh, this is a really good idea for uh, chickens uh, or, or ducks also. This, I'd be a little small if you've got some geese, but this is a really good idea for a uh, chicken barn. And here's an example of Bruce. Um, and then there's some measurements there for you guys if you, if you like to build your own stuff. Um, this is a, a good design. That way uh, birds, they can spread out. Um, it's very important so that even the ones that get picked on, they can get away from the more dominant birds. That way, this is a pretty good spread out example of it. Because if they can't get away, you can notice a lot of feathers missing from the back of the head or on the back. I'm getting picked on a lot. And here's some nesting box ideas and there's some uh, uh, dimensions for you. But um, it doesn't have to be as nice as those are. Those are pretty well built. They don't have to have a top on them. But that's, this is a uh, pretty clean, uh, clean cut look for it. And then um, when you select your, your poultry, um, you've got several options to think about. Um, if you're getting uh, ducks, for example, um, you can get meat birds or egg layers. Um, if you want egg laying ducks, uh, Khaki Campbell is a good breed. Uh, Indian runners are a good breed. They lay a lot of eggs. Um, and then for ducks for meat birds, um, some really good breeds is the French Ruin, uh, the Pekin. Um, those are um, real popular, real easy to get hold of. Those birds, are, about every horse on tractor supply will sell those. Um, if you want another good meat duck is Muscovy. Uh, Muscovy is a different type of meat than the normal duck. It's not a greasy meat. It's more of a red meat um, and it's highly sought after. By some communities. Um, I used to raise uh, Muscovies and as many as I could hatch I'd, I'd have them sold as, as fast as they were uh, big enough to butcher um, and he would butcher them and then actually ship them the meat to Japan. So um, if you want to get into poultry and the meat bird there's some decent money on raising Muscovies just because of the high uh, quality of their meat and even you can ship you can sell them to uh, some higher end restaurants. I know guys that send Muscovies or their Muscovy meat to East Coast to restaurants and then they sell them in their store. So that's a pretty uh, good option for that. Um, ducks for dual purpose. Um, Saxony is a good one. Um, there's a lot of ver uh, ver or ducks that would be dual purpose that you can go both ways with. But um, Saxony is one that comes top of my head. Um, Cayuga is a good one. Uh, they can go both ways. And then all of those birds, ducks for exhibition. Um, the main thing you have to look at for exhibition uh, poultry is they've got to be recognized in the American Poultry uh, Standard Book. And if they're not in the American Poultry Association breed list, then they can't show in shows. That's what the limit is for exhibition birds. So um, like if you get a crossbred duck, um, it'll get disqualified at a show because it's not a recognized breed. Um, and I'll go over chickens next. Um, if you want chickens for egg laying breeds, you can do um, Americana and they'll, they'll lay um, like the Easter egg, all, all different colors, green and blue. So those are pretty popular for selling colored eggs. Um, and you can do leghorns, that's a real common breed uh, for an egg laying breed. Um, meat birds, um, you've got the um, Cornish laying hen. That's uh, the most popular and they're around, around here and they're easy to get hold of. You can buy those pretty commonly. And then dual purpose, um, there's a, uh, 
Silver Lace Wine Dock, uh, Barred Rock, um, Rhode Island Red. A lot of the, those are real common birds that you see around uh, the, the barnyards running around. Um, and I've got pictures and examples of these breeds too coming in, in my PowerPoint. I'll move on to that. So here's some of the egg layers. Then that's the the uh, the white ones in the middle. Those are the Leghorns. The ones on the right, those are Americana. And there's an example of what they look like body size wise. They're not as stout as the dual purpose or the or the the meat birds. Here's the meat breed. These are Cornish. These are different color varieties of Cornish. Um, that's a uh, I think it's red, red laced blue there. Um, and this is a Cornish Barter Rock cross there. That's really, really common. You, most of the Cornish that you'll buy at Orson Tractor Supply will be at like a Barter Rock Cornish cross. And they grow real fast and they're ready to butcher pretty quick. And here's the dual purpose um, you've got New Hampshire, Rhode Island Red, Barred Rock, and Silver Lace Wyandotte. And these are good hardy breeds. They can handle heat. They can handle cold. Um, they, 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 they do pretty good in both, in both environments. And here's some exhibition breeds um, that are mainly bred just for the looks, um, like silkies. That's a splash silky right there. This is a coaching. That's a Colombian-style uh, barred rock, I believe. And that's Silver Lace Wyandotte. Um, there, and those and all of these breeds have different color varieties too, so it's not just one color of them, which makes it pretty fun. And then um, feed and nutrition, you can um, for when you get uh, day old chicks, um, there's the starter feeds you can get. I I like a uh, uh, there's an all breed or all species um, meat, uh, or it's, it's designed for meat breeds, but you can, it's at Orson, I know it's a tractor supply, I think Atwoods carries it. Um, it's a medicated, and that's fine, even if you do waterfowl, I've got no problem with being waterfowl, medicated feed. Um, you wanna be careful with um, too much protein when, when, some, when, when some breeds are growing. Um, the skeletal, the, the skeleton does not keep up with the meat or the or the muscle or feather growth and the wings can get too heavy and they can develop some uh, wing disorders. So if you push them too hard, too fast, um, the bird grows faster than what it's meant to. So you can have some issues there, but all, most of the, I mean, every feed you get the feed story, they're pretty much designed just for the backyard uh, poultry and not designed to, to push them um and a nice thing with having uh, poultry in your yard is they will eat insects um, grasshoppers and all that stuff um, they love to eat grasshoppers um, and uh, interesting fact like for with muscovies they will i've heard uh, uh, some guys have told me that they will eat 70 percent more bugs than what a electrical uh, insect killer will kill uh, those bug zappers on front porches, yeah, they'll outdo them on on getting rid of your bugs. So uh, muscovies is a really good thing to have. When I had them on our yard, I wouldn't, I never even saw a grasshopper around. Um, when I did, I watched um, some. Uh, I had about five babies walk in the yard, and it jumped up in front of them, and it was a race to go get that grasshopper because they they love eating insects. Um, and then when you're doing tours, it's real important to keep fresh water available to them. Um, just like everything, you don't want to give them old, uh, nasty uh, water. Um, they stay healthier and they'll grow better with fresh water. That, that's always important. And like I talked about with the feed, um, you can get them at your Orsland Atwoods Tractor Supply. They've got a good variation of it. Um, and if you have worms that are, if uh, poultry you ever suspect they've got worms or something, you can. There are um, safeguard pellets you can get at uh, all those stores carry them. Or there's some other treatments. That if you if you think the safeguard pellets isn't handling very well, you can give me a call and I can kind of give you step or give you some other options you can do to help your birds. 
And this is some of the insect examples that are the birds really love. Um, the grasshoppers, the chickens will eat them up like crazy. And worms, like if you've got ducks and then you see them digging through the ground around where the watering holes are at, they're looking for worms and they love eating worms. Uh, for egg handling, um, it's best to, well, I guess it also depends if you're, I'll first talk about collecting eggs for, um, for eating. Um, so you want to go check every day. Um, and if you miss the day, that's fine. Depends on how hot the day is, but um, once a day collections is, is, will work, the, the eggs won't go bad. Um, you just don't want to let them sit somewhere where it gets real hot for a few days. Um, that's, I wouldn't suggest eating those eggs then. But, um, and then once you collect them, uh, store them in the refrigerator. You can wipe them off um, or you can wash them too. Um, that works pretty good. I, I wouldn't really worry about doing a disinfectant or a soap on your eggs. Just rinsing them and scrubbing them will be fine. I mean, and if you're collecting eggs for incubation, um, you want to uh, make sure you gather them every day. But you can store them for like a week to 10 days. That way, when you're putting eggs in the incubator, when the chicks start hatching, they're not hatching one, one chick here, one chick here, and it stretches out real long. Do you have any questions, Jeff? Yeah, I was going to wait till you're done with this slide. It was a question on the feed on would you recommend crumbles or pellets? Okay, yeah. Um, it depends on uh, what, how, how big your, the birds are. Um, I've had some issues with young birds and pellets. Some pellets were too big and the, the babies choked on it. Um, it's probably best to start them on a crumble. But once they're uh, a couple weeks old, I, I have had no issues with pellets. Um, so that's it. Just for digestive reasons, there's no difference in it. Just when they're little, um, they might grab a pellet that's too big for them and it'll get stuck. That would be my suggestion on that. Um, for like, and like for collecting eggs for incubation, um, you definitely on those, you don't want to really uh, put soap on them or scrub them. Um, I would just get them damp with a towel and wipe it off if the egg's really dirty and then wrap them in, in um, uh, paper towels and put them in a cooler and then you can set them in the cooler uh, and uh, like every weekend I would put them in an incubator. That way you've got your chicks hatching on weekends when you're around and then they're not hatching every day. <coughs> and you can monitor it better that way and that way you're not keeping, you're opening up your incubator too much because that will uh, I can kill uh, your chicks if it's if the temperature fluctuates a lot or the or the humidity. Um, for incubation, uh, your types of incubators. There's uh, still air, so the still air ones. There's no fan. The air sits there, um, and then there's forced air where there's fans in, in the incubator, and it keeps a more consistent temperature throughout the incubator. I prefer the forced air ones, but they're going to be a little more expensive just because your temperature is very consistent throughout the incubator. Um, temperature, uh, suggested temperature is 99.5. And it, and it can vary a little bit. Um, if I've learned like once a week, like I'll cool them, and I'll, I'll pull the top of the incubator off for 30 minutes to an hour, and let the eggs cool and then put it back on. Um, the, when, in a normal environment, the birds aren't on them 24 seven. So it's okay for the eggs to get cooled. It's not gonna kill the, the embryos in them. Um, the, the real important thing is keeping your, your moisture uh, percentage consistent. That's more important than the actual temperature because um, if the moisture gets too high, the embryos will drown. And if the moisture gets too low, they'll, they'll dry out inside the egg. So you really want to keep your moisture about 55% and some breeds it can vary a little bit, but that's that's really, really important. And when you're turning them, um, hand turning works best for waterfowl. I've found out, and when and if you incubate waterfowl eggs, um, you wanna turn them about two to three times a day, three times is preferable, and then get like a little spray bottle and mist them every time you turn them. Um, that helps uh, the, the egg get a little bit the cooling effect can help the egg get a little bit more brittle and they hatch easier 
at the end of incubation. Um, automatic turning, I've found with chickens, uh, that works good, that saves you a lot of time. Uh, you don't have to worry about turning your eggs. Um, but if you've got waterfowl, I would not suggest automatic turning because your hatch rates will not be as good as if you hand turn them. And then raising chicks, um, you got to get heat bulb, uh, clean bedding, uh, plenty of space, and uh, and then you need to, the feed that's right for those bir birds to get a good start. Um, heat bulbs, um, you can get them. Uh, there's usually red ones or white ones. It doesn't the color of it doesn't matter. The more important thing with a heat bulb is uh, make sure the chicks are warm enough, but not putting it too close to the uh, to where they're at because they can overheat. And you can tell by watching the chicks if they're at a good temperature. If they pile on top of each other, it means they're too cold. And if the heat bulb is too too low or it's too hot, they will be in a circle or ring around the edge of the light. That means it's too hot for them, and um, that can uh, both both too hot, too cold will kill them. So if they're just evenly spaced out underneath the light, that's you, you have the bulb at the right temperature. Um, clean bedding. Um, the 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 first few days they won't poop a whole lot, so it's not as important. But if you keep them in a small pen, uh, as if they're a few weeks old, they'll get it dirty pretty quick. So you have to clean it out pretty fast, and then plenty of space just so they don't trample each other. Um, poultry is really good at uh, trampling or walking on top of birds. They're a little bit weaker, and that um, and you'll have a lot of uh, death rate if you don't if they're too too crowded pretty quickly. Um, if they're just a day or two old, that's not as important because they're not heavy enough to sit on birds and kill them. But the older they get, enough space is very important. And then starter feeds, um, they'll, they'll be labeled at the store. And if you have any questions on that, I'm happy to <coughs> answer them later when you get birds or whenever, what, when what feed, on, and depends on what breed of bird you have, um, will be um, best for them. There's an example of the heat bulb. I like having the guard on it just in case if something happens and the heat bulb falls, it will protect, it'll, it'll be less likely for that bulb to shatter. Um, and when you set your bulbs up in uh, around, especially around duck, ducklings, if they splash, that water hits a heat bulb, it can shatter. And if it shatters, it, it can start a fire pretty easily. So make sure you keep heat bulbs away from the water, especially with waterfowl, because they will definitely splash water up. And if you get it on a heat bulb, it's it's bad news. Here's an example of clean bedding, um, and you can, you can kind of see the picture on the left is a good example of those birds are real content. They're not piling each other, um, and then they're not. It's not too hot. They're not really spaced out. the The pen on the right that's a little overcrowded, but it's not too bad. Um, those birds are about to outgrow that little container pretty quickly. And then for raising chicks, starter and grower, um, the, the feeds, the, the, the ones that are starters, they've got the medication to help the chicks stay healthy. And then once they're good and a few weeks old, you can switch to a grower feed that'll push them a little harder, a higher protein. Um, so you can, you can adjust that as you go. And then um, uh, flock maintenance and, and egg layer are different types of feed. Um, maintenance is more for uh, if you've got adult birds just out in the yard, um, keep in decent shape, a maintenance feed will be fine, like a basic scratch. Uh, scratch grain, that's that's what maintenance feed is. And the egg layer has got higher calcium and uh, for the egg, the birds producing the eggs replenish that. And then if you guys have got questions, I'm happy to answer them or I can go back through slides if you want more specifics. Thank you for that, Ryan. Also, I'm going to post that survey in the chat right now. Um, while he's taking questions, if you could fill that out, that would be fantastic. Uh, this meeting was recorded. Once I have the YouTube link up, I will send an email out to all the registrants with that link to the video, as well as the PowerPoint uh, notes from tonight. 
Um, and I'm going to see if maybe Ryan can help me fill out some of those so we can make some notes in there as far as breed selection, um, maybe fill some of, put some more information in there um, to help you out in case you can keep up with everything tonight. Uh, and I'll also send out a link to our flyer with all the registrations for our other events. Um, one thing I was going to say was uh, each, if you live in a town, you're going to have some backyard chickens. Be sure that you check your city ordinances. Uh, I just found out today that the town I'm living in does not allow chickens. So be, be sure to check on that. And I know each town will be different. Uh, looks like we're getting some questions in now, Ryan. Um, so I can okay. read those out loud. I, I, can, I can see this one. Okay, well, I might read them out loud so we have them on the recording too. Yep, go ahead. Okay, so why would hens start picking on one hen after being together for more than a year? They're really beating her up. Um, it depends. Uh, some breeds could be more aggressive. It depends on what breed it is. Um, and they can tell uh, if, if one bird's get weaker, um, if they if they detect that, they'll really pick on a weaker animal. And I don't know why birds do that. Um, that's what I've noticed. If birds ever get sick or weak, once they've kind of detected that, they will pick on her. Um, and you either have to remove what's the bully birds, or you have to remove her until that bird gets stronger or the feathers grow back. Because if they see bare spots on the back of her head, um, they'll just keep picking on that until it's raw. If that answers your question. Okay, so for the next one, um, we have five Rhode Island Reds that hatched about five to one. The hens have started laying and the eggs are about 35 to 40 grams. <coughs> will the eggs get bigger as the hens mature? Yes, uh, they will get bigger. Um, pull eggs are always smaller than what the, the mature hen size eggs will be. But yeah, the, when they first start laying, that it's always going to be a smaller egg than what it will be within a year or two, or especially within a year. They'll after they start laying, they'll they'll hit the normal size. But those first few eggs can be a lot smaller than what they will be down the road. Okay, what's the best way to introduce new birds into a flock? Um, it depends on what breed they are. Um, it, that could be tricky. Um, some birds are real territorial than others. Um, do you have an example of what breeds you want to induce or what breeds do you have? I can, that can help a little bit. So if you could throw what breed you have in the chat to that question, um, Ryan can help you a little more. Um, and Ryan was having trouble with his camera, so that's why uh, you can't see him now. Um, is oyster shell needed? Um, it helps, but it's not required. It, it depends if you're giving them a layer feed. If you're giving them a layer feed, I wouldn't really worry about oyster shells, but it's not going to hurt them to give it to them. Okay, and then back to the best way to introduce new birds. Uh, those breeds are Rhode Island Reds, Buffs, and Barred Rock, usually. That's what. Okay. Um, none of those should be a real aggressive. Uh, none of those are a fighting breed. Um, so you can always put them out together and see what happens. Um, if it's all hens, you can always uh, put them in a, a pen side by side so they get used to each other. But with uh, roosters introducing new roosters, uh, that some of them will just never get over fighting, and that's something you have to deal with. But um, just slowly introducing them, let them see each other for a day or two, and then let them see how they adjust. And I would introduce them in a big space. Don't put them together in a small area. The smaller the area is, the more likely um, they're going to start fighting. Okay, um, next question. Ryan, are the tiny eggs okay to eat? I guess how tiny would tiny be? Um, that would... Well, it's likely yes, but if, I mean, if it's just like an inch or something, I wouldn't eat that, but uh, egg size can vary a lot. Um, but I guess, I guess what size uh, increments are you talking about? And I, that was with that original question, the 35 to 40 grams, including shell. Okay. That's, yeah. Yeah. That would, that, those are fine. That size. Yep. 
What's likely the cause of finding a dead hen in the coop? No obvious damage to her. Is the, is the coop locked up where no predators can get into? And how old is the bird and what, uh, what breed is it? And as we're waiting on that, again, please take the survey. And after we're through with questions tonight, that'll be the end of our program. So thank you, Ryan, for um, being here with us tonight. And there's the rest of that question. Okay. Um, it can be, um, so let me say, let's see, no obvious uh, damage to her. Um, she could have gotten sick. Um, and sometimes it's hard to tell when a bird is sick. Uh, I've had a lot of birds just randomly die, and I had no idea why without uh, taking them to a vet and letting them cut them open for it. And that's a pretty expensive alternate way to find that out. Um, if it just one bird happens and the other ones are healthy and not dying, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if all of a sudden a couple start dying, I would start uh, investigating it more. Um, you can email me or talk to your local vet. I can talk to the, the poultry specialist at K-State, and we can kind of um, ask you some more questions to get more in depth on what might be going on. Okay, and we'll give it a few, maybe another minute, and we'll see if any more questions come in. Um, Ryan, I'm just curious how many birds and what kind of birds do you have right now? Right now, um, we currently don't have any. Um, we sold out about a year ago, but when we were going strong, oh man, in springtime, I'd have four or 500 probably. Um, and I would, with my show birds, I would keep them, I'd keep pedigrees on them and keep them different pens and different breeding pens and uh, track uh uh, family lines and watch all that stuff with all the birds I had. So it was pretty in depth, more than it really needed to be. But with uh, growing family and stuff and having little boys around, that was pretty hard to collect eggs and keep eggs where they needed to be. So I knew what what hen laid it. So it's it was easier to sell out and get back into them when the boys a little bit bigger. Okay, we got another question. And for a family consumption only, what is a good number of chickens to have? And do you have a family size and they would go with that? Um, like I'm going to guess based off family th three. three or four. Um, if you've got hens that are uh, good laying age, eggs, uh, laying, laying age, um, uh, five is plenty. Because um, if you're not you're not going to eat eggs every single day. And if you get more than five, they'll, they'll get ahead of you pretty quick. Um, and it depends what breed it is, too. Some some breeds won't lay <coughs> as fast as others. Like if you've got leghorns, um, five chickens will probably stay ahead of you. And if you have seven kids... Yeah, you got seven kids. I bumped that number up a little bit, especially if they're in high school. <laughs> okay, we'll give it another second and see if we get any more questions. Okay, we do have some more questions. Is, is there any plans for, are there any plans for a poultry butchering course? Um, no, not at this time. I don't have any, not with the small acres agriculture. Um, Ryan, do you have any with far, Harvey County or know of anyone that's doing something like that? Um, not specifically a poultry butchering course. Um, depends on where our regulations hit, or if we have in-person meetings or not. Um, I've talked with the uh, Kansas Department of Ag, and they are happy to come down and talk about butchering regulations, um, what you can do for uh, selling the meat or versus doing it for yourself. 
Um, I have talked to them, but with the regulations we've had now, um, I haven't talked to them in the last month or so, but we can, if there's enough demand for that, we can look at doing a Zoom meeting to talk about butchering. Um, that's a good idea. So yeah, if you are interested in that and you haven't filled out your survey, that would be a good comment to put in the other. Um, we have barred rock that we got at the end of May. They still haven't started laying. When should they begin? Um, it should be fairly soon. Um, were they a standard bread barred rock or were, or were they bought from like Orchlands or a hatchery? Because like the standard show birds are, they grow slower. Hatchery, I would expect them to start laying within a month. A pretty safe bet. I would sure think so. As long as they're females. And there was a comment that um, someone had just got the Rhode Islands around May 1st and they just started laying last week. Mm -hmm. um, what is the best breed for egg layers and insect eaters? Um, egg layers, I would probably do Leghorn or Americana. Um, those work real good. Um, insect eaters, about all of them are going to love insects. So those birds are pretty athletic, pretty agile. They get around pretty good. They would work good for that also. All right. Uh, for those five chickens with a family of three, would that coop you showed be a good size or is that too large? Um, that would work pretty good um, because they'd have a lot of space to run around. Um, if, or, or if you have a yard that they can run into, it doesn't have to be that big, but um, that would be a little bit on the big side, but it'd be pretty adequate. Okay, and it looks like there would be a little bit of interest in that butchering course. These are all good questions. I'm learning a lot from this. I'm not much of a poultry guy. <laughs> I'm still getting a couple years. For a butchering course, are you wanting butcher to sell or are you wanting to butcher for your family? For family. Okay. Um, I, I do know that um, Crables and McPherson, they they will butcher uh, your birds too. So if you've got separated butcher now, you can like, schedule a appointment with them and they butcher and package them. And their packages is legal for selling also. But if you do sell meat, the meat has to be stored in a freezer that is not used for personal use. You'd have to have a separate freezer to sell meat out of for the public. Um, do you know the cost of taking a bird to the butcher, Ryan? What around that would be? The more you take, the cheaper it gets. I'm going to guess at uh, three to five dollars a chicken, something like that, if you take a smaller number. But uh, I have that, and that, that price was a couple years ago with the COVID pandemic. Uh, prices could have easily gone up because of the popularity of, of selling animals off the farm. So. I couldn't tell you a real accurate price range. Okay, and what butchering company did you say? Crables. They're between McPherson and Salina uh, off I-35. 